the first major innovative change that you see in evolution is none of what you would expect to find with humans or humanity, but it's the ability to walk on two legs bipedally. And it made the difference between Lucy surviving or not. She was on the constant search for food, and that meant finding new trees to feed in. She spent as little time on the ground as she could because she knew she was vulnerable. Lucy had no defense against leopards and saber-toothed cats, except the refuge of the trees. But standing upright, she could see further than any of her ancestors. Sensing movement in the grass, she runs. Whatever it was, predator or not, it had gone. But the balance of power between the predator and its prey had started to shift. The simple act of walking upright started an evolutionary chain reaction. It freed the hands to become the makers and users of tools. And it was tool use that would one day power the brain's growth with protein from scavenging and hunting. But it all began here with Lucy. So, is Lucy finally the missing link? In a sense, Lucy is a missing link, but they all are missing links. Because without each step in the record, without each missing link, uh, we wouldn't have ourselves today. They're all links of how we've gone from a Lucy to a Tong child, to a habilis to a homo erectus. All of these are links leading towards homo sapiens. Having traveled back in time over three million years, we'd found a creature that seemed to begin the human line. Yet Lucy was a long way from being human. We found the common ancestor of all the things that are human. But at the end of the day, it's, it's a bit empty. What we don't, look what we don't find with Lucy. We, we, we don't find culture. We don't find the things that make us human. We don't find our humanity. Science began to look again at our most recent ancestors. 40,000 years ago, a successful, intelligent hominid species occupied Europe. Neanderthal man. Could he hold the key to how we finally became human? Forty thousand years ago, Neanderthal hunters on the scent of red deer in the forests of Western Europe. They'd been tracking the same herd for three days. But they were opportunist hunters. And a wild pig was too tempting to resist. But they missed their first attempt and the pig disappeared into the undergrowth. The Neanderthals worked out a plan to corner their prey. The ability to organize and communicate, to exercise a plan, were all advanced human skills. The question was, did they originate here with Neanderthal? Exactly how human were they? June of 1996, the vaults of the Rhineland Museum in Germany. 
genetic scientist Matthias Krings from Munich University was about to attempt to answer that question. Museum curator Heike Kainitsky allowed Krings to examine the original Neanderthal bones found in 1856, the evidence that began the quest for our origins. They wore full body protection to avoid genetic contamination. Krings isn't interested in looking at the bones. He was going to look inside at their DNA. It had been thought impossible to extract DNA from any sample older than 10,000 years they were attempting to go four times further back in time, to the age of Neanderthal. Scientists had long thought that Neanderthal was our most recent ancestor, that he became human in one last crucial evolutionary leap. If so, he should have almost identical DNA to us. In Munich, Matthias Krings finally had the two sets of DNA results, Neanderthal and modern man. And? What do you see? What do I see? I don't know what I see. This can't be right. Between 18 any two people, there should be an average of eight differences in the same piece of DNA. But between the human and Neanderthal samples, Krings counted nearly four times as many differences. This is something else. This is something else. I have never seen this. Man, are you sure? Yes. Hundred percent. What we here see is a completely different species. Neanderthal, it seemed, were not our ancestors after all. Evolution had produced two separate human-like species at the same time. Sooner or later, they were bound to come face to face. While the Neanderthal tried to flush out their pig, into the same area came a new hunting party. Another human species were after the same pig. At the time Neanderthals went to extinction, we know anatomically modern humans, people like us, had also moved into Europe and were competing with them perhaps for those areas where it was slightly easier to catch the game. Modern humans that have larger group sizes, more efficient tools maybe, they might be just that better at hunting. The Neanderthals' plan to corner the pig had failed. They'd lost sight of it in the undergrowth. Then it seemed to have broken cover, further down the hill. In fact, the modern humans had got there first. The first encounter between two almost identical human-like species must have been a profound shock. In this tough Ice Age world, there was only room for one of them. Five hundred thousand years ago, they shared a remote common ancestor, a descendant of Homo erectus. 
From their African homeland, their ancestors migrated across half the world, spreading as far as Southeast Asia and into Northern Europe. Here they would emerge as Neanderthal men. But the ones who stayed behind in Africa evolved too. And just under 200,000 years ago, a new species first appeared. Homo sapiens, modern man. They too were hunters, but some scientists have suggested they supplemented their diet with fish, spurring their brain development. The evidence suggests their culture developed faster, that their social groups became bigger and more complex, and driven by population pressure and climate change, they too migrated. It took 150,000 years to spread from Africa to Europe, and as they moved further and further north, their appearance changed. Eventually, they caught up with their long-lost cousins, the Neanderthals. The European continent was losing one of its oldest, most successful species. Within a few dozen generations, the last Neanderthal was gone, and the world overrun by a species with better weapons, better organization, and greater numbers. Modern man. For the first time in our evolutionary history, we were totally alone the last surviving hominid species on Earth. Within 40,000 years, Homo sapiens had colonized the whole world, free of any competition. This is finally us, physically the result of three million years of change since Lucy. But we are also fully human in our mind, and it's that which has given us the critical edge. The one thing that Neanderthals didn't do that we know that early modern humans did was express themselves artistically. The social systems that humans have, the richness of, of communication between humans, uh, not just speaking but symbolically, must be part of the success of modern humans. And it, it may well have given us the edge over Neanderthals and the other species that were here 50,000 years ago. That same mind that gave us victory over our rivals one day asked the obvious question, where did I come from? For over 150 years, we've been searching for the answer to that question, and each piece of evidence has brought us a clearer and clearer picture of our past. But the search hasn't stopped. Many people say the more you find, the more there is to find. But I've been in the field long enough to know that almost every year an important discovery is made. I keep telling my students I never give the same lectures twice. I mean, it's a hugely dynamic field. Uncovering our evolution so far has been a remarkable adventure, but it's one that is still not over. It leads us to, to wonder, what else is out there? What else are we going to find? In the next 10, 20 years, as paleontologists explore parts of the world that we haven't gotten to yet, who knows what we're gonna find? <laughs>